What's up everybody and welcome to part six of my coding a decision tree classifier from scratch video series. In the previous video, we built our decision tree algorithm. And in this video, I want to make some small changes to it. And the first thing that I want to change is that here, instead of using um, the column index in the question, it should use the actual name of the feature. So for example, like in our example tree, it should say, Pattern width smaller or equal to 0 0.8 instead of three smaller or equal to 0 0.8. And this is now where the data frame that we pass into this function comes in handy because it has an attribute that allows us to access all the names of the columns. And we get it by simply saying df.columns. And then here we can use then the column index to index this array to get the actual name of the feature. So since uh, we only have this data frame available in the first call of this function, we have to then create this uh, column headers array in this part of uh, this data preparations block. So we're going to say column headers equals df.columns. And then here, where we create our question, we're going to say feature name equals column headers brackets split column. And then we obviously pass in this feature name into this format method. And this now should create a tree where there are the actual feature names in the, in the question. So, but now if I run this, we get an error, an unbound local error, and it says the local variable column headers was referenced before assignment. So it was referenced before assignment here. And what happened is that um, we're only going to create this column headers variable in the first call of the function. So in this recursive call, or in this recursive call, uh, we increase the counter by one. And then obviously we don't execute this uh, block of code. And so the column headers variable isn't created. And then obviously we don't have access to it. And now to get around it, we're going to specify this uh, column headers variable as a global variable. So there's another local variable, which is only available within the function. So we're going to say global column headers. And this is basically the same as saying, for example, a equals five. This now, because I've run it uh, outside of the function, is a global variable. And this way I can use this variable in any of my functions. So for example, if I write here, print a, then uh, this function should now print the five or print a before we reach this local error. Therefore, we obviously have to come first out this line. So now let's run this and it prints the five before we get to the error. So now let's delete this line again and then erase the comment. And now since this column headers variable is basically a, a global constant and also to indicate that it's kind of a special column, we're going to name it just using caps. So I'm going to say column headers in caps. And then we're going to rename this uh, variable here and here. And this now should create a decision tree where there is the actual feature name in the question. So let's rerun this cell. And in fact, here there are the feature names. So this is the first change I wanted to make. The second one is that I want to provide this functionality to the uh, decision tree algorithm function. So where we, uh, for example, check if there are at least five data points. And if there aren't those data points, then we classify the data even though it might not be pure yet. So to provide this functionality, we simply pass in another parameter and we're going to call it min samples. And the default value for that we will set to two. 
simply because that's the minimum number of data points that you have to make a split. And now, since this, this field basically has the same purpose as this function, which is to reach the stub field, we're going to implement this min samples variable as another base case. So then actually we have two base cases and then we're going to set those into parentheses and then we say or if um, the length of our data is below our min samples variable and that's already everything that we have to do and now let's check if it works so here we're going to set the min samples argument to a relatively high number so for example 60 and this way we should get a tree that has uh, much less uh, layers so let's run this and it didn't work and it didn't work because we didn't pass through this min samples um, uh, parameter in our recursive calls of the function so here we have to uh, include that because otherwise in this function then uh, this parameter will, set to, will be set to the default value and then it's not 60 anymore so now let's run this cell again and now the min sample its parameter should work so we should get a tree with less layers so let's run this and indeed we have uh, it works and this is actually exactly this tree and this is something called uh, pruning a tree. And while we're at it, let's uh, uh, implement another way for doing that. And this one is to say how many uh, different layers we want to have. So for example, in this case, we would specify that we want to only want to have two layers. And the way that we're going to implement that is by creating another parameter. And this one we're going to call max def. And we're going to set the default value to 5. And this then is just another base case. So we're going to write or if um, our counter is equal to the max def. And that's already everything we need to do. So now if I set the parameter, the max def parameter to 1 uh, equals 1. And obviously we also have to pass through uh, this parameter in our recursive calls of the function. So this now should, uh, this cell should uh, create a tree with just one question. So let's run it. And indeed it does. Now let's see, or let's put the max def to two. And here we get two questions. And now let's set it to three. And here we get three layers. And this is almost exactly the tree that we had where we talked about the theory uh, in the videos about where we talked about the theory of this tree there's only one small difference and it's here it's the no answer to the pattern with smaller equal to 1.65 question so instead of just saying iris virginica it asks another question and the strange thing here is that both answers are the same so what happened here well what happened is that at this point the algorithm or the data wasn't pure yet so the algorithm decided to make another split and then here at this point the max def was already reached because we only uh, we already um, had three layers so we could not make another split so then RC we would then classify our data and in this case then we would classify the data based on which class appears most often and in both cases both cases, uh, Iris Virginica happen to be uh, to appear most often. And now, obviously, really asking this question doesn't make any sense because both answers are the same. So what I would like the algorithm is to do is instead of having this um, dictionary, it just it should just say Iris Virginica at this point. And the way that we're going to do that is. Right here, after we create our answers, we're simply going to check if the yes answer is equal to the no answer. And if that's the case, 
then our subtree won't be a dictionary, but simply one of those answers. And we're going to pick the yes answer. And then um, if the answers are not the same, then we are going to append them to our list in the subtree, just like we did before. So that's already everything that we have to change. So now if I run, uh, rerun this cell, then uh, the tree should say Iris Virginica at this point. So let's run it. And indeed it says Iris Virginica. So now this tree is exactly the tree that we have, that we had in the videos where we talked about the theory of this decision tree algorithm. So now we are done with all the changes and now we can use this tree to classify new unknown flowers. And this will be the topic of the upcoming video. So thanks for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next video.